Welcome to the Northern Light Webcasting Network. We bring you Western Wisconsin sports via the internet. Stick around and get to know us. Northern Light Webcasting Network in conjunction with Colfax High School presents Viking Pregame. A look at today's Colfax Viking Girls game. And now, Viking Pregame. Good evening and welcome to Colfax High School where tonight we have a game which could determine the champion of the Dunn St. Croix Conference as the conference leading Colfax Viking girls with a record of 16 wins and two losses 11-0 in the conference will take on the second place Durand Panthers who are sporting a 12-6 record thus far on the season and are 9-2 in the Dunn St. Croix Conference. Rick Olson here, and soon I'll be joined by Dan Petschow as we're getting ready to bring you all the play-by-play -play action of tonight's game right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Coming up in this edition of Viking Pregame, we'll take a look at tonight's matchup between the Duran Panthers and the Colfax Vikings. Then we'll get Coach Doucette's perspective on tonight's game in Coach's Corner. Following that, we'll bring you all the play-by-play -play action of tonight's game. So it's time for some high school girls basketball action and all that coming up right after this brief timeout. You're listening to Viking Pregame on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Hi, I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Rick Olson back here at Colfax High School where Dan Petchow and I are getting ready to bring you all the action of tonight's Dunn St. Croix Conference basketball game between the Duran Panthers with a record of 9-2 and two in the conference and the Dunn St. Croix Conference leading Colfax Vikings who have an 11-0 conference record and are 16-2 and two overall. Now last Thursday, the Vikings eliminated the Mondovi Buffaloes from the conference championship race when they defeated them by a score of 54-37. to The Vikings were led in scoring by senior center Rachel Charlo, who scored 22 points. In addition to Charlo, other leading scorers were seniors Camry Meredith and Morgan Schleissner, who added 15 and 5 points respectively. At 18 games into the season, the leading scorers for the Vikings are Charlotte, who averages 14.5 points per game, and Meredith, who's averaging over 13. Uh, senior Taylor Irwin is also contributing over 7 points per game. In addition, Madison Barstead is adding nearly 4 points per game, and Addison Olsen is chipping in 3.5 points per game. The top rebounders for the Vikings are Meredith and Charla with nearly nine boards per game each. Duran comes into tonight's game with an overall record of 12 wins and six losses following their exciting 50-49 victory over Boyceville last Thursday evening. The leading scorers for the Panthers in that game were Madison Kilbotten, who scored 13 points, and Josie Ratty, who added another 10 while Jocelyn Carruthers chipped in nine. Leading scorers for the Panthers this season are juniors McKenna Hurlbert and Leah Sabalco, who are averaging 16 and 11 points per game respectively. Hurlbert is also a force in rebounding as she gathers nearly 10 boards per game. Currently, the Panthers are two games behind the Vikings in the Dunn St. Croix Conference race, with only two conference games remaining after tonight's game. Therefore, a victory by the Vikings over the Panthers tonight would give the Vikings an unsurmountable three-game lead over the Panthers and also eliminate the Elk Mound Mounders from the conference race. This would earn the Vikings their ninth Dunn St. Croix Conference Championship in the past 12 years. So we're looking forward to quite a battle with some exciting girls high school basketball. And we'll have all the action for you right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. 
But first, following this timeout, we'll get the coach's perspective as we chat with Viking head coach Joe Doucette on Coach's Corner. You're listening to Viking Pregame on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Sweet strawberry icing. You're in goodwill and just past that vintage denim jacket you spot. Miniature donut earrings. You lean in. Ah. Oh. That's the scent of shopping success. Because at Goodwill, every item you buy funds local job training and more. So bring home those donut earrings and bring home so much good to your community. Goodwill. Bring good home. Brought to you by Goodwill and the Ad Council. Time now to see what the coaches have to say. It's Coach's Corner, what they look at tonight's game from the coach's point of view. And now Coach's Corner. Once again, we're talking with Viking girls head coach Joe Doucette. And coach, last Thursday, the Viking girls took a big step towards a conference championship by eliminating the Mondovi Buffaloes from the conference race by a score of 54 to 37. Your comments about that one? Well, you know, Mondovi was much better than they were the first time. I thought they played harder, and Coach Kaufman did a good job. And, you know, having them ready, I thought our team showed some great resilience. I thought we played a a great second half and, and, and really um, took out a, a pretty good team. So, you know, we're terribly excited. Yeah, we, you know, our hard work and, and teamwork have putting us in a good spot. And, I mean, we're fired up to play, to, you know, and, and uh, we, we're looking forward to, to playing Duran tonight. Well, I was just going to say tonight you're playing the second place yeah. Duran Panthers. They're currently two games behind the Vikings in the Dun St. Croix. Yeah. A win by the Vikings would lock up the conference championship for the ninth time in the past 12 years. Yeah. Now that sounds like it might be a pretty special motivator. Oh man, yeah. You know, I, and again, our kids have worked very hard for this. We've we put in the time, and you know, uh, we've talked all year. We haven't won anything yet. So, but I. I be very surprised if we don't just ready to go and just just fired up and ready to go. You know, we have them eight great seniors and, and then those juniors and, and the sophomore who help. And, and uh, you know, I, I can't wait to play and, and I think we're going to play real well. Now, the girls are currently riding an eight game winning streak. And the last time the Vikings played the Panthers, the girls defeated them 58 to 38. What do you know about the Panthers? Well, I tell you what, they, Rick, they've raised the bar since they've joined the Dunn St. Cry. they got proud kids, proud coaches, you know, in a lot of different sports, and, and they, we will get their best effort. I, I don't, I think it's going to come right down the wire. I think that they're, they're that good, so they don't give up. They're scrappy as can be, and, and uh, we, we're going to have to play one of our best games tonight to win. Now, did everybody come out of the last game uh, Thursday healthy and ready to go? Well, Gina Bovey rolled an ankle a little bit, but I, you know, the, the word this morning was she, that she was fine and bounced back pretty good. So other than that, it's just pretty much some of our younger kids off the JV and the JV2 team that are a little banged up, but our varsity is healthy as can be. Well, Coach, hopefully you'll be able to capture another Dunn St. Croix Conference Championship for the Vikings tonight. Boy, I hope so, Rick. You've been listening to Coach's Corner, where they look at tonight's game from the coach's point of view. This has been a presentation of the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Did you know that some vaccines prevent cancer? I'm Dr. Bill Schaffner of the National Foundation for Infectious Diseases, and I want to talk to you about a vaccine that protects against the most common cause of liver cancer, the hepatitis B vaccine. Hepatitis B virus can stay silent in the body for decades before symptoms develop. Many adults need vaccination, including those up to age 59 with diabetes. To learn more, visit adultvaccination.org. That's adultvaccination.org. You've been listening to Viking Pregame with a look at today's Colfax Viking Girls game. This has been a presentation of the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Stay tuned. Coming up next is live Colfax Viking basketball. Hi, I'm Amanda Pete. Like all new parents, my husband and I want what's best for our baby. When it was time for our daughter's immunizations, we wanted the facts. So we carefully researched vaccines. We spoke with doctors and other experts and asked some tough questions. We decided the vaccines were the best thing for our child. I urge you to get the facts. Learn the facts about vaccines so you can make the best health care decisions for your family. Thank you. A message from the American Academy of Pediatrics and vaccinateyourbaby.org. Man, I love my kids so much. I once sat for three hours in the cold rain to watch her soccer team lose by 18 goals. 
I love my kids so much, I once used a tube to suck snot out of her stuffed nose at 3 a.m. You win. Love your kids? Love them enough to make sure they're in the right car seat. From toddlers to tweens, visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to find the right seat for their age and size. Keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Colfax Viking Basketball is on the air. The Northern Light Webcasting Network in conjunction with Colfax High School proudly presents today's Girls Colfax Viking game. Join us as the 2019-2020 Vikings strive for success in the Dunn St. Croix Conference. And now, back out for coverage of today's girls Colfax Vikings game. And welcome back out here to Colfax High School. Rick Olson along with Dan Petschow, and we are getting ready for what could be a championship game tonight. Dan, there's a lot of excitement, and you're waving across the... <laughs> to the camera people from the other <laughs> side. <laughs> hey, Dan, we got a big game today. Why don't you let us know who's playing in it? Yeah, here's your starting five for Colfax Vikings. Senior number 10, Morgan Schleisner. Senior number 12, Jana Bovey. Senior number 14, Cameron Meredith. Senior number 22, Josie Stanky. And senior number 44, Rachel Charlo. For Duran Panthers, they're starting five. Soft, let's start with sophomore number 10, Madison Sand. Soft, number 12, Madison Kilbotten. Addison Weiss, number 21. 22, Elias Sabelko, and 55, McKenna Herbert. And the teams are both over at their benches, and we are getting ready for the national anthem. That'll be coming up in, in just a moment. And then we'll be ready for some championship basketball action here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Yeah, big game tonight. The Colfax High School Choir with our national anthem, and they're getting ready to do the starting lineups. And you know what? Since Dan has already given us the starting lineups, we're going to take a brief time out, and you're listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Oh no. If your car has had an oh no experience, whether it's from a deer, another vehicle, or any other cause, be sure to see the hardworking people at Morgan's Auto Body in Colfax. Mike Morgan and his staff are ready to get your car right again. The staff at Morgan's Auto Body are ASE and iCar certified technicians, and they can get your car looking like new. That's Morgan's Auto Body in Colfax. Call them at 715-962-3559. The Colfax Messenger has covered the happenings of Colfax and the surrounding area for over 120 years. No one cares for Colfax like the Messenger. Readers get the most current news, sports, and feature stories about the people and places of Colfax. Also, the Messenger is your one-stop source for all your printing needs. To subscribe to the Colfax Messenger or receive a free quote on your printing needs, call the Messenger at 715-265-4646 or visit them online at www 
www.dewitmedia.com. Northern Light Webcasting Network is proud to present Colfax Viking Basketball for the 2019-2020 season. And Valentine's Day with the Viking Girls as they take on the Boysville Bulldogs. Viking pregame begins at 7 o'clock and live play-by-play -play begins at 7.10 right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. And we're back here at Colfax High School just getting ready to get things going. The Duran Panthers are out on the floor getting ready for the opening tip-off. McKenna Hurlbert is going to be jumping center for the Panthers. Here come the Vikings, Rachel Charlo and Hurlbert shake hands. We have Schleissner, Bovey, Meredith, Steinke, and Charlo out there for the Vikings. Sand, Kilbotten, Weiss, Sabalco, and Hurlbert out there for the Panthers. We are waiting for, <laughs> for the Something. drums from the pep band <laughs> to get out of the way and uh, now the official says, okay, let's go ahead and tip this thing off and get this game underway. It's a big one for both teams, and the ball goes up, and it gets tipped to the Vikings. Meredith has it under control. She gets it out to Steinke, puts up a three, and it goes right through the net. Three to nothing, Vikings on top. Coming down the floor for the Panthers is Sabalco. She's being picked up in the backcourt by Schleissner through the center circle. Gets it down to the free throw line, kicks it out to the near side to Weiss. Now back out high to Kilbotten, over to Sabalco, back to Weiss on the left side. Sand has it over on the right side. Now they get it out high to Sabalco. Back over to Sand to Sabalco. She's between the circles. Takes it over to the right side to Sand, high, wide, and right. Cross court pass over to Kilbotten. She drives into the lane and got fouled on her way through. She was gonna kick it out to the right side, but uh, she got hit on the way through. And that foul is on Meredith. First personal, first team. Waiting for Jana Bovey to get her shoe tied. There we go. And the Panthers getting ready to inbound it. Kilbotten looking to pass it in. Finally gets it out high to Weiss. They get it over to the right side to Sand. Now back over to Kilbotten on the left. To Sand, who's come around to the left side now. Tries to pass it into the lane, and it goes off the leg of Bovey, whose other shoe is untied. Well, now she <laughs> tightened it up. Sand inbound it for the Panthers. Vikings up three to nothing. Sand gets it to Kilbotten. Taps it back to Sand and she takes it out between the circles. Now drives down to the free throw line. Kicks it out to Kilbotten and over to Weiss. Weiss tries to feed it into the lane for Hurlbert and she can't quite get to it. And Meredith picks it up, gets it over to Schleissner. Kicks it out to Steinke into the lane to Charlo who lays it up off the glass and in. Five to nothing, Vikings on top. Sabalco passes it over to Sand. To Weiss. Weiss across the timeline. Over to the right side to Sand. Back out to Sabalco, to Sand. Feeds it underneath the Hurlbert, who gets tied up, and we have a jump ball call. And possession arrow is in favor of the Duran Panthers. Sabalco to inbound it, feeds it into the lane to Weiss, puts it up and it goes through. Five to two, Vikings on top. Meredith gets it to Bovey, brings it down the floor. It's, she got tied up in the backcourt and tried to pass it to Meredith and threw it over her head and out of bounds. Un, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, kind of skied it right up into the bleachers there. An uncharacteristic <laughs> turnover for the Vikings, you might say. Sabalco with it, gets it over to Sand, still in the backcourt, now through the center circle. Sand hands it off to Sabalco, comes around the left side, now back, dribbles around to the right side. Gets it out to Weiss, out high to Hurlbert, 
Over to Sand on the left. Sand drives into the lane and got her pocket picked by Meredith. She took the ball as Sand went by. Meredith feeds it down to Schleissner and a little high for Morgan. And uh, it goes out of bounds. Kofax trying to push a little bit, but a couple errant passes. Into the lineup is Carruthers for Sand. And coming down the floor is Sabalco. Across the timeline. Gets it over to Weiss. High on the right, or yes, on the right side. Now back out between the circles. And over to the right side to Weiss. Pass intended for Hurlbert and it's picked off by Meredith and they get the ball to Schleissner who brings it down the floor. Schleissner feeds it off to the left side to Steinke. Out high to Charlotte. Over to Bovey on the left. Feeds it into the lane to Meredith. Puts up a jumper and hits it. Seven to two, Vikings on top. 14, 46 to go in the first half. And the Panthers come down the floor with Weiss on the dribble. Takes it through the center circle. Spin move, still between the circles. Feeds it over to Carruthers. Now over to Kilbotten and to Weiss. Or check that, that's Sabalco. Sabalco down the right side. Out to Weiss now, wide on the right side. Down into the right corner to Carruthers. Back out high. And it's over to Kilbotten on the left. To uh, Sabalco, who drove into the lane, put it up, and it's out of bounds. She didn't quite get it up there, and it went off a hurlbird out of bounds, and the Vikings have the ball. Strand's kind of trying to keep it inside, and uh, good job by Colfax defense to uh, deny it. Schleissner gets it across the timeline. Now she's trapped near the timeline, but gets it over to Bovey, back to Schleissner. Schleissner takes it down the left side, now looking to pass it back out. Hits it to Meredith, between the circles. To Bovey, she also has it between the circles now. To Meredith on the left, drives down the baseline, puts it up, no, and we have a foul, I believe it's on Hurlbert. Good drive on the baseline by Cameron Meredith to draw the foul. Yeah, the foul is on Hurlbert, her first personal, first team foul on the Duran Panthers. Meredith at the line for two. First one's on the way, in and out, no good. And we have some substitutions for the Vikings. Barstead, Irwin, and Addy. Addy Olson are in the lineup. And Meredith's second shot. On the way, and it's good. Vikings up eight to two. As the Panthers have it, Weiss has it on the dribble in the backcourt, picked up there by Barstead, gets it across the timeline. Over to Kilbotten, high, wide, and right. To Carruthers between the circles. Out to, out to Sabalco, who fed it in underneath. To Hurlbert, and she got fouled going up. Earlbert at the line for two. Ball was on Charlo, her first personal. Her first shot is on the way, it's good. Eight to three, Vikings on top. Earlbert at the line for the second of two. And the shot's on the way, it's good. Addy with it in the backcourt for the Vikings. Switches hands, brings it across the timeline, feeds it down to Barstead, who feeds it down low to Charlo. Charlo reverse layup, off the glass no good, but got fouled on the way in, and she's gonna go to the line for two. And we've got another foul on Hurlbert, that's her second, second team foul on the Panthers. Charlo's first shot is up and it does not go in. It bounced around on the front part of the rim. Looked like it might decide to crawl over the top, just wouldn't do it. Charlo's second shot off the side of the rim, no good. Rebound taken down by Kilbotten. 
She brings it down the floor quickly across the timeline into the lane. Tries to feed it to Sabalco, who has to save it from going out of bounds, but did so right into Addie's hands, who brings it into the forecourt for the Vikings. To the Barstead on the left side. To Meredith, feeds it in to Charlo, puts up the shot, no good. Got the loose ball on the floor and tried to put up another one. From the Panthers. From the Panthers. Kilbotten on the dribble, gets it over to Sand. Back out to Kilbotten, over to Carruthers on the right. Carruthers drives into the lane, puts it up, no good. Charlo with the rebound for the Vikings. Addy takes it across the timeline. Feeds it back out to Charlo at the top of the key. Charlo out to Addy on the right, or on the left. Addy feeds it underneath to Charlo. Reverse pivot and put it up and off the glass and in. Nice pivot move by Rachel Charlo underneath. Put it off the glass to make it 10 to four. Vikings with 12.09 to go in the first half. Kilbotten with it. Feeds it out to Carruthers. Over to Sabalco, back to Kilbotten, puts up the shot, no good. Rebound taken down by Meredith. Meredith down the floor. She takes it across the timeline. Down the right side, feeds it out to Irwin between the circles. Irwin still on the dribble. Now picks up the dribble, feeds it underneath to Meredith. Looks to go up and she can't do it and they got a jump ball call. Meredith got tied up underneath there by Sand. Yeah, Duran's defense collapsed there and got the jump ball. Possession arrow in favor of, favor of the Vikings. Irwin to inbound it. Pass comes out intended for Barstead. Ball got almost intercepted and then we have another jump ball being called. As we had a loose ball on the floor, Barstead dove in after it, as did some Duran Panthers, and now the ball goes over to the Panthers. Sand inbounds it to Sabalco, who brings it down across the timeline. Sabalco over to Kilbotten on the left. Feeding it over to Sand on the right. High, wide, and right, tries to feed it underneath. To Hurlbert, Hurlbert gets it from a lot of traffic that way. She was challenged by both Meredith and Charlotte, but Hurlbert got a hold of the ball and put it up off the glass and in. 10 to six, Vikings up by four. Addy takes it across the timeline and got it taken away from her and down the floor and in the hole come the Duran Panthers, Sabalco with the shot and the harm on the way in. 10 to eight, Sabalco's gonna go to the line for one more. Colfax having a little trouble with the uh, the trap here at half court. Schleissner into the lineup for Addy. And Sabalco at the line. Shots on the way. Off the front of the iron, no good. Rebound, taken down by Barstead. Schleissner down across the timeline. Tries to feed it underneath to Charlo. Kicks it back out to Barstead. Barstead puts up a three, no good. Rebound taken down by Meredith. Meredith back out to Barstead. Over to Irwin on the right side. Irwin cross court pass to Charlo. Drives into the lane, turns around, puts it up off the glass, no good. Rebound batted around, picked up by the Panthers. They're trapped down in the corner and we have a timeout being called by the Duran Panthers. So a timeout on the floor. We have Vikings 10. Panthers 8, you're listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. What makes Hometown Pharmacy different than the big chains? People. When you walk into Hometown Pharmacy, you'll see friends and neighbors on both sides of the counter. We come to Hometown Pharmacy because they are also very knowledgeable and helpful. We may not be on every corner, but chances are we're in your hometown or we'll be there shortly. And we care about you. Hometown Pharmacy, our family caring for your family. Stop by Colfax Hometown Pharmacy in downtown Colfax. Rick Olson along with Dan Petrow back here at Colfax High School where the Vikings have a 10 to eight lead over the Duran Panthers. 10.36 to go in the first half. Panthers have the ball under their own basket. Sabalco to inbound it. Gets it to Carruthers. Brings it down the floor. Takes it through the center circle and gets it back to Sabalco. Sabalco dribbles between the circles over to the right side to Hurlbert. 
to Sand. Sand drives into the lane, puts the shot up. No. Rebound taken down by Charlo. She gives it to Schleissner, who takes it into the forecourt for the Vikings. To Charlo on the left side. To Irwin, down in the left corner. Ball gets knocked loose on the floor, picked up by Meredith, and we have a whistle and a foul underneath. And the foul underneath is on Carruthers for the Panthers. That's her first personal. Third team foul on the Panthers. Ball gets inbounded to Barstead. Down in the left corner. Back out high to Meredith. To Irwin at the free throw line. Drives into the lane. Ball gets knocked loose. She picks it up. Gets it out to Schleissner. Schleissner drives into the lane. Puts a shot up and it goes in. Morgan Schleissner in the land of the Giants. Puts <laughs> yeah. the two in. 12 to eight, Vikings back up by four. Carruthers with it, over to Sabelko. Out to Sand on the right side. To Radel, Radel at the free throw line. Gets it out to Sabelko. To Hurlburt underneath, tries to put the shot up, no good. Rebound taken down by Charlo. Charlo to Schleissner, back to Charlo from three, off the iron, no good. Rebound chased down by Meredith for the Vikings to Schleissner. She's at the top of the key. Hands it off to Barstead. Barstead over to the right side to Charlo. Feeds it into the lane to Meredith. Gets it under control. Dribbles out of the lane. Out to Charlo at the top of the key to Barstead on the right. Barstead takes it into the lane. Jump shot from the free throw line. Off the iron. No good. Rebound taken down by the Panthers. Coming down the floor is Sam. She's on the right side. Takes it down the lane, drives straight down into the lane, and we have an offensive foul being called. She just ran over Schleissner, just absolutely ran her over. Morgan was flat on the floor, and we get the offensive foul being called, and we have some massive substitutions going on for the Vikings. Meredith to inbound it for the Vikings. Drangles full court press. And Schleissner with it. On the dribble, still in the backcourt. Gets it to Bovey. Quick pass back over to Schleissner in the forecourt. Schleissner takes it into the lane. Now kicks it out to Steinke. Outside the three on the right side. Back to Schleissner and she got tripped as she was trying to go over to the right side. And the foul is on Sand, it's her second personal. Yeah, two quick ones for her. Fifth team foul on the Panthers. And now we have an official checking something on the side over here. Talking with the Duran coach. I'm not sure what that was about. I'm not sure what that was about either, but they got it settled, whatever it was. And Schleissner has it, takes it into the forecourt for the Vikings. To Bovey, now over to the right side. To Steinke, out to the top of the key, to Meredith. To Schleisser, drives through the lane, gets it out to Steinke. Steinke down to Meredith, puts the shot up, it goes in, and we have a whistle and a foul. Camry Meredith doing a good job getting on the post. The foul is on Kilbotten. It's her first personal, sixth team foul. So the Vikings will be in the bonus from this point on in the first half. 8.07 to go. Meredith full, trying to get the plus one here. And she does. 15 to eight, Vikings up by seven. Weiss with it. Coming down the floor, across the timeline. Pulls up the dribble, gets it over to Kilbotten. On the right side, down low to off. Now over to the left, or back over to the right side to Sand down in the corner. Duran goes small. And Sand does a nice spin move, puts it up off the glass and in. No forecourt press by Duran. Schleissner with it, trying to get it through the backcourt. Vikings in a little bit of trouble, and they get it into the forecourt to Steinke. 
out to Meredith, feeds it underneath to Wilson who put it up off the glass and in. Seville Wilson gets her first points of the night, 17 to 10, Vikings on top. Sand down in the lower right corner. Kicks it out to, we have a whistle and Substitutions? Well, we have a turnover of some type against the Panthers. Yeah, she lost it out of bounds. Uh, Weiss lost control of it. So Meredith inbound it for the Vikings. Full court press again by Duran. Inbound pass to Schleisner. Schleisner bringing it down the floor across the timeline. And we have a foul being called. And this is on Sabalco. That's her first personal. Seventh team foul, so Schleisner goes to the line for the one and one. On the floor for the Vikings are Charlo, Meredith, Schleisner, Addison, and Irwin. Schleisner's shot is up and in. So she gets a second one. And Schleisner's second shot is on the way and it's also good. 19 to 10, Vikings up by nine with 7.02 to go in the first half. Duran looking to inbound it and we have a timeout being called by the Duran Panthers. Timeout on the floor with 7.02 to go in the first half. It's Vikings 19, Panthers 10. You're listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Are your pooch's proportions putting on pounds? Or is your kitty's constitution constantly complaining? Well, stop by and see the friendly folks at the Colfax Animal Hospital. Dr. Bruce Buckley and his staff will be happy to help you get your family friend back on the road to healthy living. That's the Colfax Animal Hospital. Call them at 715-962-3380. And we're back here at Colfax High School. Rick Olson along with Dan Petchow. 19 to 10. Vikings on top. 702 to go in the first half. And the Panthers to inbound. Vikings putting on full court pressure. They inbound it and they trap Weiss in the backcourt, but she gets it over to Kilbotten. Kilbotten still dribbling in the backcourt, looking for somewhere to go. Ball gets tipped by Irwin, and, but Schleisner couldn't pull it up, and uh, Weiss grabbed a hold of it, and now they have it in, Duran has it in the forecourt. Weiss has it high, wide, and right. Feeds it over to Kilbotten, or Sabalco, check that. Now to kill Button. Feeds it underneath to Hurlbert and she puts it up and in. Good move by McKenna Hurlbert on the block there. And the Vikings come down the floor. Irwin with it. Gets trapped right after she comes across the timeline, but gets the ball over to Charlo. Now Schleisner has it between the circles. Over to Charlo on the left to Addison. Feed down to Charlo underneath and Charlo couldn't quite make it go in. And the Panthers have it. Down the floor is Weiss. She gets it over to Auth. Back out to Weiss. Over onto the right side to Kilbotten. To Sabalco. To Auth between the circles. To Weiss at the free throw line. Now Weiss has the shot from outside the lane and puts it off the back of the iron. And the Vikings get the rebound. Meredith feeds it down to Addison. Now out to Schleisner into the lane to Charlo, tries to put it up and it just rolls off the iron and the Panthers have the ball, they come down quickly. It's off, driving the baseline, puts it up and we're going to get a foul. I think it's just out of bounds. Yeah, evidently it was just out of bounds and evidently it was off of Meredith out of bounds. So the Duran Panthers have the ball. Weiss to inbound it. Throws it out high to Hurlbert. 
Gets it over to Kilbotten, who puts up the shot no good from three. Meredith brings it into the forecourt for the Vikings, out to Schleissner standing in the center circle. Schleissner feeds it down the right side of the lane to Charlo, puts up the shot, no off the iron, and Herbert with the rebound. Gets it to Weiss as she brings it across the timeline. Down the right side, and she took a few too many steps that time. It was good defense by the Vikings, threw her off stride, and, and she ended up taking an extra step before she could get the shot off. Meredith to inbound it, she gets it to Schleissner. Schleissner feeds it into the forecourt to Meredith, feeds it down to Charlotte on the right side. Back out to Schleissner who's out high between the circles. Feeds it over to Charlotte. Charlotte from the edge of the lane at the free throw line puts it up and in, 21 to 12. Vikings up by nine. Inbound pass goes off of Schleissner and out of bounds. So the Panthers will retain possession. Coming into the lineup is Sand. And she's replacing Sabalco. Weiss gets it into Carruthers. Ball gets knocked loose. They get it over to Addison. Puts up the shot. It got blocked. But Sand has it. She's trapped in the corner. But she finally gets it over to Weiss. Feeds it to Kilbotten, drives into the lane, puts it up and in. 21-14, Vikings on top. Schleissner bringing it down the floor. In the backcourt, under full court pressure. Gets it across the timeline to Meredith. Meredith, cross court pass to Addison. Puts up the three, off the iron, no good. Meredith with the rebound, puts it up and in. Good job by Koufax to get under the hoop, get the rebound, get the two points. Weiss with it for the Duran Panthers across the timeline. Looking for somewhere to go with it. Gets it over to Carruthers on the left side to Kilbotten. They feed it to Hurlbert. Back out to Kilbotten. Kilbotten with a jumper and it's in. 23-16, Vikings on top. 3.17 to go in the first half. Pass to Meredith. She gets it across the timeline over to Charlo. And Charlo took a step too many as she started to go. She took that step before yeah. she got the ball to the floor. Yeah, she knew it too. She had a nice drive into the lane going for her too. <laughs> Barstead into the lineup for Addison. Inbound pass for the Panthers. As Weiss brings it up across the timeline. She picks up her dribble. Pass gets intercepted by Meredith. Over to Irwin. Irwin lays it up and it gets blocked. Meredith gets the rebound, puts it up and in. 25-16, Vikings up by nine. That's 10 points for Camry Meredith tonight. Sand with it for the Panthers. Over to Weiss. Weiss still in the backcourt, now takes it through the center circle. Feeds it over to Sand on the left, high, wide, and left. Over to Carruthers on the right. Down to Weiss in the lower right corner. Out to Kilbotten, to Sand, to Carruthers on the left side. To Hurlbert in the lane, and Hurlbert got fouled in the lane. And I think they're going to get Charlo with the foul. I'm not positive about that, but I think so. Nope, my mistake, it was, it was on Schleissner. That's her first personal, fourth team foul on the Vikings. Little confusion by Durand as to who's going to inbound the ball. Well, and they had six six girls out there. Somebody had to come off. <laughs> Only if you get caught. Oh, good point. <laughs> inbound pass gets knocked around loose on the floor, and we have a jump ball called. Hurlbert came down on top of it, but a couple Vikings reached through between her legs and grabbed hold of the ball, and it was a jump ball. Long pass to Schleissner. She takes it down, tries to lay it up, and it goes off the bottom of the backboard, and Hurlbert grabs hold of it, and here come the Panthers. Radel with it through the center circle. 
Drives into the lane, feeds it out to the right side to Carruthers. Carruthers with a shot, no good. Rebound goes out of bounds, and it's going to be Viking ball. Minute 52 to go in the first half. Crowd wanted to follow on that last play down under the hoop. Yeah, they sure did. Meredith the inbound it, but it gets slapped out of bounds. You might have even heard that one by Kilbotten. <laughs> yeah, it's right underneath us here. So Meredith the try again. Gets it into Irwin. Irwin takes it down across the timeline. Ball got knocked away from her, gets it over to Meredith. Feeds it down low to Barstead. Barstead drives to the hole, can't quite get it to go in. Hurlbert with the rebound. Down the floor come the Panthers. Sand with it, still in the backcourt. Now she gets it across the timeline. To Carruthers, over to Kilbotten. To Radel. Radel on the left side, takes it out to the top of the key. Over to Carruthers on the right side. Feeds it to Sand. Sand looking for somewhere to go. Gets it to Hurlbert. Hurlbert on the right side, and the ball goes off the hands of Sand out of bounds. Vikings ball with a minute 11 to go in the first half. Great battle underneath between uh, Rachel Charlo and McKenna Hurlbert. They're really banging underneath, trying to get position right now. And they're letting them play. Yep. Schleissen her with it for the Vikings. Takes it across the timeline, feeds it to Charlo. High, wide, and left. Drives into the lane. She's picked up there by Hurlbert. Out, back out to Irwin, to Meredith. To Charlo, Charlo turns, puts it up, off the iron, no good. Rebound by Meredith, she gets the shot to go and got fouled on the way in. And I believe the foul is gonna be on Kilbotten. Yes, the foul is on Kilbotten. That's her second personal, eighth team foul. Good job by the Colfax seniors, Cameron Meredith and Rachel. To, Rachel gets on the block, misses the shot, but Camry comes right in, picks up the rebound and puts it in. Gets the end one. And, and drew the harm at the same time. Yeah, it's a great play. And the free throw is good. 28-16, Vikings up by 12, biggest lead of the night. Addison into the lineup for Meredith. Inbounding is Kilbotten for the Panthers. To Carruthers. Carruthers down the floor. Still in the backcourt, picked up there by Addison. Across the timeline to Kilbutton on the left side. Drives into the lane, feeds it over to Hurlbert, gets the shot to go and drew the harm. I believe it's gonna be on Wilson. Now nope, fall is on Irwin, I believe. Yes, that's her second personal, fifth team foul. Herbert at the line. And the plus one is no good. Rebound taken down and a good attempt at trying to save it by Kilbotten. She threw it in and tried to bounce it off a of Viking but bounced it off of one of her own players instead. And the Vikings get the ball. Barstead with it to inbound it. Gets it to Schleissner. Turns, dribbles. Takes it right through the center circle. Down the left side of the lane, out high to Barstead. Over to Addison on the right side, puts up the three off the iron, no good. Irwin with the free or with the rebound. To Go Schleissner back. between the circles. They can settle down for one shot. To Addison, to Schleissner. Ball gets knocked out of her hands. She gets it back, gets it to Addison. Thought about a shot, cross court pass to Irwin. Six seconds to go, Irwin's shot is no good. Rebound taken down by Duran. Just about a second left, long shot off the backboard, no good. And we've reached halftime with a score. Colfax Vikings 28, Duran Panthers 18. We've got some halftime programming, including uh, Viking Profile and the Colfax High School Report. Coming up right after this timeout, you're listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network.
If you have a high deductible health plan, opening a health savings account at Dairy State Bank will allow you to save tax-free dollars to pay for a long list of health-related services allowed by the IRS. Dairy State Bank HSAs are serviced locally and work like a regular checking account. You can use a debit card or check to pay for expenses and access your account through online or mobile banking. Visit DairyStateBank.com to learn more about HSAs and online or mobile banking. Dairy State Bank. Banking on relationships. Member FDIC. A lot of Sylvan and Wrestling. Senior Sawyer Best and Mitch Harmon and every senior in the Wow. 
Core Viking Profile, where we take a closer look at one of the Colfax Viking players. And now, Viking Profile. Today on Viking Profile, we're going to get to know Josie Steinke, a senior at Colfax High School. And we're going to be chatting with Josie right after this brief timeout. We are the boy band. Your tween made you see. We are the boy band. It's painful concert number three. We are the boy band. We're five and nineteen. We are the boy band. Always singing on key. You love your kids enough to take them to see their favorite uh, band. Love them enough to make sure they're buckled up in the back seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. We're talking right now with Josie Steinke on Viking Profile. And Josie, we know you play basketball, but are you involved in any other activities here at school? Um, I was I'm in like student council and FBLA and other clubs like that. Now, when did you start playing basketball and what kind of experience have you had doing that? I started in second grade and played up with the third graders because I was really tall. And it's been really fun playing with all my friends throughout the years. What's the most important thing you've learned in playing basketball? Um, I think teamwork because we have to work together really hard and stay as one. So when you're not playing basketball or you're not here at school, what are some other things that you're interested in that keep you occupied? Um, I hang out with my friends a lot, go shopping and stuff. Um, I watch a lot of Netflix and yeah, hang out with my family. All right, here's a few rapid fire questions. Pie, ice cream, cake or cookies? Ooh, cookies. Any particular kind? Chocolate chip. Homemade or store-bought? Uh, homemade, but depends on who makes them. Okay. Do you like the soft ones or the hard ones? Soft ones, definitely. Okay. I, I expect about a dozen <laughs> for you, from you sometime during the season. Right, yeah. <laughs> Ford, Chevy, or other brand? Oh, gosh. I don't really care. <laughs> okay. As long as it's got wheels and they go around. Yes. Uh, your favorite NBA or WNBA team? Um... Mm, I don't know. Um, it's Lakers, okay. I don't the, the Lakers, all right. Just because that's the one that popped in your head. Okay. <laughs> your favorite college basketball team? Wisconsin. Badgers. Okay. We're talking with Josie Steinke on Viking Profile. And Josie, what are your plans for after high school? I am going to UW Lacrosse to study elementary education. How about a shout out to your family? Um, thanks for coming. <laughs> when people come to Viking Games, what number are you going to be wearing and what position do you play? 22 and forward. And we want to thank Josie Steinke for joining us today on Viking Profile. Coming up next is more of Viking Halftime. You've been listening to Viking Profile. This has been a presentation of the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Hey. It's me, your cell phone. We need to talk about something, something serious. I know you love me. I know you like using me wherever you are, but I feel like this isn't working out when you're driving. I know you may think that it's possible to focus both on me and the road, but I just don't feel the same way. I think we should spend time away from each other when you're driving. It's for the best. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. High School Report with an update on what's happening at Colfax High School. This past week at Colfax High School, both the boys and girls basketball teams were busy with two games each. The Viking girls led off the week on Monday the 3rd when they rode a 23-point performance by Rachel Charlo to a dominating 88-54 victory over the St. Croix Central Panthers. The Viking boys got into action when they hosted the Glenwood City Hilltoppers on Tuesday the 4th. The Vikings capitalized on 26 points from Cole Seehaver and 21 from Ed Hajdukovic to rack up a 65-45 victory. Then on Thursday the 6th, the girls 
traveled to Mondovi for an important conference matchup with the Buffaloes. Once again, the Vikings utilized 22 points from Rachel Charlo and 15 from Camry Meredith to post a 54-37 victory. The boys wrapped up the week on Friday with a close-fought 53-50 victory over the Plum City Elmwood Wolves. That action leaves the boys with an 8-2 conference record and tied for first place in the Dun St. Croix Conference. The girls ended the week continuing to lead the Dun St. Croix Conference with a perfect 11-0 record. Bloomer Colfax wrestlers have several wrestlers ranked in the top 10 for their weight classes in Wisconsin's Division II as they prepare for this weekend's regional wrestling tournament. At 132 pounds, senior Sawyer Best is ranked 7th. At 152 pounds, sophomore Bowen Rothbauer is ranked 7th. And at 160 pounds, Mitch Harmon is ranked 10th in the state. The WIAA Regional Wrestling Tournament will be held in Somerset on Saturday. Now coming up next week, the girls Viking basketball team will travel to Melrose Mindoro High School to face the state's second ranked Division IV team on Tuesday, February 18th. The Mustangs were the team in the past two years to defeat the Vikings in the WIAA sectional finals and keep them from going to the state tournament. Then on Thursday the 20th, the Viking girls will wrap up their regular season when they host the Spring Valley Cardinals. We'll have all the varsity action for both games right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network with Viking pregame beginning at 7 o'clock and live play-by-play -play beginning at 7.10 p.m. The Viking boys will be at Duran to take on the Panthers on Tuesday the 18th and at Boyceville on Friday the 21st. On both nights, JV starts at 545 and varsity begins at 715. The FFA week at Colfax will be from Monday, February 17th through Friday, February 21st. And we want to remind parents that parent-teacher conferences are next week on Monday the 17th and on Thursday the 20th from 4 to 8 p.m. both days. Communication between you and your child's teacher is critical to the success of your child's educational experience. And due to the late night of the parent-teacher conferences, there will be no school on Friday, February 21st. And that's what's happening at Colfax High School. This has been Rick Olson reporting. You've been listening to the Colfax High School Report with an update on what's happening at Colfax High School. The second half of Colfax Viking Basketball is coming up. Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> <laughs> and now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart. Heart and brain. Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. And we're back here at Colfax High School where it's halftime. Vikings on top of the Duran Panthers, 28 to 18, in a game that if the Vikings hang on and win it, it will capture them their ninth. Dun St. Croix Conference Championship in the past 12 years. And Dan, what are your numbers telling us? Yeah, here's the lady scores right out for Colfax. Uh, we got number 14, Cameron Meredith. She's leading the team with 13 points. Rachel Charlo has six. Morgan Schleisner has two, three. Josie Steinke has two. And Seville Wilson has two. For Duran Panthers, their leading score right now is number 55, McKenna Herobert with eight. Madison Kilbotten has four. Uh, Madison Ad Sand has two, Addison Weiss has two, and Leah Sabelko has two. Okay, and that adds up to 28-18 in favor of the Vikings. We're going to be ready with second half action right after this timeout. You're listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. In addition to being your hometown newspaper, the Colfax Messenger is also your one-stop shop for all your printing needs. 
The Messenger provides full in-house design and full color printing services for copies, business cards, letterheads, envelopes, pamphlets, brochures, books. They can even do posters up to 13 by 30 inches for your events or benefits. Call the Colfax Messenger at 715-265-4646 or visit DeWittMedia.com. Okay, we're ready to get the second half of this one started, and the Panthers will inbound the ball. Sand to inbound it. And she gets it over to Sabalco, who takes it across the timeline. Panthers are now moving left to right on your listening device dial. Over to Sand on the right side. Back out high to Sabalco, to Kilbotten, to Weiss, to Sand. They're over on the right side now. To Weiss down in the right corner, or left corner, check that. Out to Kilbotten at the top of the key. Over to the left side, three-pointer on the way, no good. Rebound taken down by Stanky. Schleissner with it across the timeline. Feeds it to Stanky. To Meredith, drives into the lane and puts it up and in. Camry Meredith with two more. She's got 15 on the night. 30-18, Vikings on top. Weiss across the timeline. She's between the circles. Over to the left side to Kilbotten. To Sand. Back over to Kilbotten. Back out to Sand. Over to Weiss. Three pointer on the way. Off the iron. No good. Rebound taken down by Charlo. Schleissner with a long pass down to Irwin. Or check that. That's Bovey. To Meredith, who drives down into the lane from the right side and drew the harm on the way in. And she's going to go to the line for two. Foul is on Kilbotten. That's her third personal. First team foul on the Panthers. Meredith's first shot is up and in. Camry seems to have the hot hand tonight. Second shot on the way, it's also good. 32 to 18, Vikings up by 14 now. Weiss takes it across the timeline. Over to Sand on the left side. Feeds it down underneath to Hurlbert, tries to go up with it, ball gets blocked and Charlo has it. Gets it to Schleissner quickly across the timeline. Feeds it off to the right side to Charlo. Looking for a three, doesn't take it. Gets it to Schleissner. Schleissner feeds it out to Meredith. Can't quite get the handle on it, then picks it up. Now they get it into the lane. To Sh Charlo lays it up, no good. Rebound taken down by Meredith. Out to Steinke, to Schleissner. Drives to the free throw line. Back out high to Charlo. Three pointer on the way, no good. Rebound gathered in by Sabalco. Down the floor they come. Weiss with it on the left side, drives into the lane, tries to feed it over to Hurlburt, tied up underneath, and we have a jump ball being called. Meredith and Hurlburt getting tangled up with that one. And the possession arrow is in favor of the Duran Panthers. I'll check that. It's Vikings ball. Switch it up. Strand goes full court press. And that means the Vikings switch who's going to inbound it. And Meredith is going to inbound it. Gets it to Schleissner. Schleissner on the dribble in the backcourt. Comes up across the timeline. Double team there. Gets it over to Bovey. Bovey with a three on the way. No good. Rebound taken down. Pass was intended for... Uh, Sabelko, but she didn't know it was coming, and now they pass it over to Carruthers and it goes out of bounds. They missed connection. Yeah, she was thinking, go cut, and they threw it right behind her. So the Vikings inbound it to Bovey. Get it over to Schleissner, who's across the timeline between the circles. Now over to Bovey, out to Meredith. From the three land, and she hit it. Set play for Colfax to get Camry open for a three. And we have a timeout on the floor. Vikings 35, Duran Panthers 18, 15.06 to go in the game. And you are listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. <coughs> Thank you. 
Are your animals feeling a little under the weather? Give the nice folks at Colfax Animal Hospital a call. Bruce Buckley is just what the doctor ordered. In fact, he is the doctor, and he's ready to help. That's the Colfax Animal Hospital. Give them a call at 715-962-3380. And we're back at Colfax High School. Vikings are starting to take control in this one in the second half, 35 to 18. Looking to lock up that conference championship. Yeah, that, this is about time of the game, every every game where they start to put a little heat on the other team. And, and start to pull away a little yep, bit. pull away. Usually around uh, 15 minutes or so. In the game. And that's what we have, 15.06 yeah, to go. <laughs> All right, Panthers to inbound it. Weiss brings it down the floor, takes it across the timeline. Over to Sand on the left side, high wide and left. Over to Sabalco on the right. Down to Weiss, down in the lower right corner. Back out to Carruthers, top of the key. To Sand on the left. Back out to Sabalco, drives down into the lane, puts it up and in. Leah Sabalco. It's only four points for her, but it sure seemed like more. <laughs> uh, Schleissner, and now they get it over to uh, Steinke, puts up a three, no good. Rebound chased down by the Panthers. Carruthers with it, feeds it to Sabalco. She takes it down, feeds it underneath, and Sand tried to go up with it, ball got blocked. They feed it into, well, they get it back out to Sand, who puts up a three, I believe that was. Yep. Sand with the three, she was just outside the arc. And down in a corner where it's a little hard for us to see. And Charlo can't control the ball in the forecourt and it goes off her knee and out of bounds and the Panthers have it. Weiss to inbound. Into Sabelko. Sabelko back to Weiss. Quickly across the timeline. Now Weiss takes it between the circles. Colfax gets it to Sabelko going over to the right or over to the left side. Colfax goes man. Now feeds it to Sand on the left corner. She takes it out high, drives to the lane, then out to Weiss on the right side. Out high to Sabelko, back to Weiss down on the right side. To Carruthers, now to Sand on the left. Into the lane to Hurlbert. Hurlbert turn around, does not go. Meredith oh. with the rebound. That's, that hit about oh. every part of the rim you could hit without going through. <laughs> Schleissner with it between the circles. Gets it over to the right side. To Bovey into the lane to Charlo. Charlo with a one dribble and drew the foul on Hurlbert. It's going to be the second team foul and third personal foul on Hurlbert. Charlo at the line, she'll be shooting two. First one's on the way, in and out, no good. Charlo's second shot. On the way, no good, rebound by Meredith, puts it up and in and drew the foul. Oh, and I think that's on McKenna Hurlbert. I think you're right. I think that's number four on Hurlbert. Good job by Cameron Meredith to crash the boards, get the rebound in the end one. Yes, that's foul number four on Hurlbert, third team foul on the Panthers. Meredith's shot is up and in. They're going to have to pull her here pretty quick. 23 points for Meredith on the night. Inbound pass gets knocked out of bounds by Schleissner. So the Panthers maintain possession. Durand decides to keep her in. Kilbotten to inbound it, looking for somewhere to go. Finally gets it in to Sabalco, who gets trapped in the backcourt. Dribbles around to her right, still in the backcourt. Now gets it across the timeline. Out to Hurlbert. And they get it to Kilbotten. Drives into the lane, puts it up, no good. Rebound taken down by Charlo. Gets it to Schleissner. Down the floor to Irwin. Irwin with a three-pointer on the way around and off. Rebound taken down by Sand. 
Down the floor for Sand, across the timeline, takes it right into the lane, then looks out to the left side, and Kilbotton wasn't expecting it. <laughs> it was picked up by Sabalco and taken right out of her hands by Schleissner. Out to Meredith from three. Oh, that evidently didn't go through. I saw the net yeah. move, and from our <laughs> perspective, it kind of looked like it went through. I'm <laughs> but evidently it didn't. So <laughs> it went out of bounds, and the Panthers will have it. Charlo goes out, and Wilson comes in for the Vikings. Sabalco inbounds it. Gets it to Carruthers. Carruthers across the timeline. Takes it up between the circles. Out to Sand on the left. To Radel. Then down to Carruthers on the right side. Out high to Kilbotten. To Radel. And then to Carruthers, three-pointer on the way, no good. Rebound taken down by the Vikings. Schleissner with it across the timeline, down to the free throw line. Stops, shoots, came up short. It was partially blocked, and the Panthers have it. Sand with it across the timeline, down to the free throw line, takes it down the lane, kicks it out, and a three-pointer on the way, and good by Carruthers. 38 to 26, Vikings on top by 12, 11.30 to go in the game. Irwin with it, gets trapped. Gets it to Schleissner, Schleissner to Wilson. Wilson from three, puts it up, off the iron, no good. Rebound, taken down by Sand. A little run by Durandre right now. Quickly down the floor comes Sand and takes it the length of the floor, but it does not go in. Good job Wilson by, with the rebound. Good job by Colfax to get back and play D. Schleissner has it now between the circles, setting things up to Barstead on the left side, high, wide, and left to Wilson between the circles. Over to Irwin, feeds it down underneath to Barstead. Barstead looking to go up and got fouled. Good job by Maddie Barstead to get to the block, turn, and get the foul. The foul is on Sand. It's her third personal, fourth team foul on the Panthers. Barstead's first shot is up and off the front of the iron, no good. Charlo comes back in, Wilson goes out. Addie Olson comes in for Schleissner. Barstead's second shot is on the way, it's good. Vikings up by 13, 39-26. 10.50 to go. Kilbotten across the timeline for the Panthers. Gets it over to what? Uh, Radel. Now to Weiss. To Carruthers down in the left corner. Back out high to Radel at the top of the key. Over to the right side to Weiss. Weiss cross court pass to Radel. Drives to the free throw line. Pulls up the dribble. Tries to get it out and does get it out to Kilbotten. Kilbotten's pass is not a very good one and she had to run and get it back. Weiss has it, feeds it over to Radel, to Kilbotten between the circles, over to Carruthers from the left side, puts up the three and hit it. Six points on threes from Carruthers in this half. Addy with it across the timeline. They cut the Viking lead to 10. Barstead with a three on the way, it's no good. Rebound, we have a foul being called on Meredith on the rebound. I think she climbed the back. Kofax just has to settle down a little bit, work the ball around, run a little clock. That's run Meredith's it. second personal, first team foul on the Vikings. Durand inbounds the ball. Kilbotten takes it down the floor. Over to the left side to Radel. Down to Weiss in the corner. Turnaround jumper by Sand is in. Just inside the lane, 35-31, they cut it to eight. Schleissner with it, gets it over to Irwin, to Meredith. Ball gets knocked away and we have a jump ball being called. Possession arrow in favor of the Panthers. They missed the mismatch inside. Rachel Charlo is about six inches taller than the other girl. That pass went down to the feet of Meredith and
couldn't control it, and both players dove on it about the same time. So the Panthers have it driving into the lane as Carruthers, she went up, and we got a blocking foul being called. And let's see who they call it on. I think it's going to be on Charlo. Yes, it's her second personal, second team foul on the Vikings. Carruthers at the line. First shot is up and it's good. 39-32. Vikings lead by seven with 9-11 to go in the, first, or in the game. Carruthers second shot. On the way, it's good. Six point game. That's a two possession game. And the Vikings have the ball coming down the floor is Schleissner. Full court pressure, gets it across the timeline. And she went down and they call her for the travel. No reason to panic for Koufax yet. They're still up six. Play tight D. And they should be fine. The pressure seems to be bothering them a little yeah. bit though as they bring it up. Kilbotten gets it over to Weiss on the right side. Out to Radel. Radel drives into the lane, tied up underneath. Charlo almost had the steal, but didn't get it away quite fast enough, and they call the jump ball, but the Vikings still have it with the possession arrow. Meredith inbounds it to Schleissner. Schleissner brings it down the floor, across the timeline. Gets it over to Irwin. Irwin between the circles, back to Schleissner. Schleissner over on the right side, feeds it down low to Charlo. Charlo with a jumper, puts it up and in. Yeah, there's a mismatch right now on the baseline. About, a, about an eight foot jumper by Charlo from the baseline and she hit it 41 to 33. Feed down to Sand, puts it up no good. Charlo with the rebound. Colfax has to take advantage of this mismatch right now with Rachel and who's guarding her. Across the timeline comes Schleissner to Meredith on the right side. Feeds it underneath to Charlotte, turns to try to put it in. <laughs> and I believe we're going to get Kilbotten on the call because she went flying as Rachel turned around because she had her hand on Rachel's arm. Yeah. Yeah, that's the match right now, Rachel and Kilbotten. So Charlotte at the line for two. First shot's on the way, and it rolls in. 42-33, 8.03 to go. Hurlbird in now. She's got four, she has to be careful. And Charlo's second shot on the way, and it's good. 43-33, Vikings back up by 10, and there's 10 points for Rachel Charlo tonight. Eight minutes to go in the game. Carruthers takes it across the timeline for the Panthers. To Weiss between the circles. To Kilbotten over on the left side. Back out to Carruthers, over to Weiss on the right side. To Sabalco. Over to Weiss on the right. Tries to feed it into the lane. Ball got knocked loose and Sabalco took a shot to the beak that time. Yes. His hands were going towards the ball. Her nose got in the way. And they got uh, Charlotte with the foul on that one. Third personal for Charlo, third team foul on the Vikings. Weiss to inbound it. Looking for somewhere to go. Finally tries to get it into Hurlburt and it got knocked out of bounds by Merida. Good job by Cameron Merida at the close on that. Knock it away. Good pressure or good defense by the Vikings. Deny to keep that ball from coming in. Inbound pass to Kilbot and tries to put the shot up. It got blocked by <laughs> got blocked by Charlo, and then the rebound got tied up. And quick it's whistle a jump there. ball. Yeah, it was a pretty quick whistle. Possession arrow is in favor of the Panthers, so they are going to inbound it. They get it to Kilbotten on the right side, and she was trying to hit, throw a bounce pass into the lane. It went off of. Meredith's foot, so the Panthers will maintain possession. Long inbound pass, out to Sabalco, feeds it into the lane to kill Botten, then tries to get it over to Carruthers and missed connection on the pass. Out of bounds, Vikings ball. 
Good Meredith, Meredith to inbound. Schleissner with it. Takes it down the floor, across the timeline. Pulls up the dribble, free throw line to the right. Gets it over to Charlo on the left side. Charlo drives in the lane. Puts up an off balance shot and it goes in. Wow. 45-33, Vikings back up by 12. Both fans wanted different on that one. And they both wanted it. Yeah. Weiss with it, gets it over to Carruthers, to Sabalco, back to Weiss down in the right corner. Out to Carruthers at the top of the key. To Sabalco, tries to get it into Hurlburt and she stepped out of bounds trying to save it inbounds. Ball goes over to the Vikings. Good job, Colfax defense to collapse that and get the turnover. Sand coming into the lineup for the Panthers as Weiss takes a seat. Charlo has the ball, gets it over to Addison, who's in for the Vikings. Addison dribbles it across the timeline, feeds it over to Schleissner on the right side. Schleissner takes it between the circles to Meredith on the left, high, wide, and left. Now down low to Schleissner on the left side. Tries to drive the baseline, doesn't get it. Kicks it out to Charlo at the top of the key. Drives down into the lane, tries to go up with it, and they're gonna get her with a travel. Ooh. Thought that would've been a foul there. It was close. So the Panthers get the ball. Kilbotten inbounds it to Carruthers, who brings it down the floor. Picked up in the backcourt, back to Kilbotten, takes it into the forecourt. Over to Sand on the left side. Back out high to Sabalco between the circles. Takes it to the left side to Kilbotten. Kilbotten drives into the lane, now kicks it out to Sand. Sand drives down into the lane and out to Carruthers, puts up a three, no good. Rebound taken down by Charlo. Charlo feeds it off to Schleissner to Addison. Addison drives towards the lane, kicks it back out to Schleissner. Schleissner. To Meredith, Meredith cross court pass to Schleissner on the left. Schleissner drives in, puts it up, and got whistled and fouled on the way in. I believe the foul is going to be on Sabalco. I believe I'm wrong. I think it's going to be on Kilbotten, and I'm wrong again. It's on Sand. It is on Sand. It's her fourth personal, sixth team foul, and Schleissner to the line. Shot goes up, rolls around and off. Yeah, Morgan's not afraid to take it to the baseline. No, not at all. That's why she gets nicknamed the Chihuahua. <laughs> no concept of size. Her second shot's on the way, rolls around and in. And we have a timeout on the floor with 5.32 to go in the game. Vikings 46, the Duran Panthers 33. You're listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. If you have a high deductible health plan, opening a health savings account at Dairy State Bank will allow you to save tax-free dollars to pay for a long list of health-related services allowed by the IRS. Dairy State Bank HSAs are serviced locally and work like a regular checking account. You can use a debit card or check to pay for expenses and access your account through online or mobile banking. Visit DairyStateBank.com to learn more about HSAs and online or mobile banking. Dairy State Bank, banking on relationships, Number FDIC. Back here at Colfax High School. Rick Olson along with Dan Petschow and we have 532 remaining in the game. Vikings on top by 13, 46 to 33. Panthers to inbound the ball. Full court pressure being put on by the Vikings and the Panthers inbound it to Sam. She's got Schleissner guarding her in the backcourt. Sand still looking to get it across. Now she gets it across the timeline through the center circle. Feeds it over to Sabalco on the left. Sabalco takes it back through between the circles, drives down the right side, lays it up and in. Sabalco kind of took it around the world and put it in. Schleissner to bring it down for the Vikings. Stops between the circles, gets it over to Addison on the left side. Now back out high to Irwin. Irwin drives down the lane, puts it up and in. Taylor Irwin with a nice drive to the basket. 48-35, Vikings on top. Kilbotten drives. Kilbotten took it the length of the floor, drove it down and put it up and in. 
Vikings inbound it to Irwin. She's picked up by Sand in the backcourt, puts on a little burst of speed, gets it across the timeline, and now it's tied up, and we have a jump ball being called. Possession arrows in favor of the Vikings. Kovac still has to take care of the ball. Inbound pass, Irwin to Schleisner. Schleisner between the circles. Takes it down the right side. Feeds it out to Addison, high, wide, and right. Addison drives on the right side, feeds it off to Schleisner. Out to Meredith, still on the right side. Kovac's going to be patient now. Four minutes left. Gets it to Addison in the lane, kicks it back out to Charlo. Charlotte to Schleisner. Schleisner drives down about the free throw line out to Addison. To Charlotte, just outside the lane. Gets it to Meredith out at the top of the key. Meredith drives into the lane, tries to put the shot up. We have a whistle and a foul. No, it's out of bounds, they're saying. Oh. Boy, foul. bodies are hitting the floor and crashing into each other, and they're saying. It was. Little discussion, I, I thought so too. I thought Grant tipped it and went off, went out of bounds, but they're saying it went off Camry. Right, and now the officials are gonna talk about it. And they're still talking about it. And they changed the call. It is out of bounds off the Panthers. And so, Irwin to inbound for the Vikings. 3.53 to go. Vikings up by 11. Irwin to inbound, and we have a whistle and a foul, and I think they're gonna call Schleisner, who got the worst of that. Yeah, she did. Nope, oh. she went to the line. Who do we got the foul on then? Oh. Oh. Falls on Herbert, and that's the end of her night. Five for McKenna. She ends up with eight points tonight. And 3.53 left on the clock. That could make a big difference in this score. Schleisner at the line for the one and one. Because that's the seventh team foul. First shot is nothing but net. 49-37. Six points for Morgan Schleisner. Second shot on the way, it's also good. 50 to 37, Vikings on top. Grand Panthers bring it down the floor. Kill Button on the dribble. On the right side. Feeds it out to Sibalco. Sibalco down to Carruthers. I think that's Carruthers. Maybe not. I think that's a 20 to off. Back out to uh, pass was intended for. Sabalco and it got knocked out of bounds by the Vikings. Yeah, good close up by Margaret Schleisner, knock it away. Check that, that is Carruthers in there. No, I take it back, it is both Carruthers and Auth are in there. That's why I'm getting confused. <laughs> one's 20, one's 30. Auth has it and she feeds it off to the right side to Weiss. Weiss now between the circles to kill Botten. Over to Auth on the left side. Out high to Weiss, down to Carruthers on the left corner. Back out high to Sabalco, drives into the lane. We're gonna have a foul called and I think it's on Addison. Nope, it was on Irwin. You know, I just gotta stop anticipating who these fouls are on because I've been getting them wrong now. It was on Irwin, it's her third personal. Fourth team foul on the Vikings. Sabalco to the line, puts the shot up, it's good. Just over three minutes left in this one. Vikings up by 12. Sabalco's second shot on the way, off the front of the iron, no good, rebound by Meredith. Gets it to Schleisner. She brings it down the floor, across the timeline. Takes it on the left side to Charlo. Charlo out to the top of the key to Meredith. Over to Schleisner on the right side. Schleisner to Meredith. 
Meredith dribbles between the circles. Gets it over to Addison on the right. Addison back out between the circles to Irwin on the left. Feeds it into the lane to Charlo. Charlo lays it up around and out. No good. Rebound taken down by the Panthers. Down the floor comes Sabalco. Feeds it over to Auth. Auth down to the baseline, but it's intercepted by Schleissner. Schleissner drives it into the lane, puts it up, got hammered on her way up this time, and she's going to go to the line. I believe it was Sabalco. And let's see if I'm wrong again. <laughs> nope, this nope. time I got it right. <laughs> There's only one to pick from that. that that's true. <laughs> that's Sabelko's second foul, eighth team foul. Schleissner was in the act of shooting, so she's going to get two. First shot on the way, it's good. Second shot now for Schleissner. It's on the way, it's also good. 52 to 38, Vikings up by 14. Sabalko brings it down the floor. Across the timeline. On the left side, loses control, but it was tapped out of her hands by Schleissner. So it's out of bounds and Carruthers will inbound it for the Duran Panthers. She gets it into Sand. Sand takes it out between the circles. Still on the dribble. Over to the left side. And down low to Kilbotten. Kilbotten drives into the lane and we're gonna get a foul being called on Charlo. As she was trying to pick the pocket. Four on Rachel. Into the lineup is Jaina Bovey, replacing Irwin. Sabalco inbounds it to Kilbotten, over to Sand, puts up the shot, no good. Rebound taken down by Radel to Carruthers, over to Sand on the left side. Feeds it out to Sabalco. Out to Sand, still on the left side. To kill Button, back to Sand. Sand drives to the baseline, now feeds it out to kill Button. Loses the handle on it, picks it up, gets it over to Radel. Now over to Carruthers and down to Sabalco. Sabalco with a turnaround move, tries to go up and she traveled. <laughs> Minute 17 to go, Vikings are up by 14. 52 to 38. Some substitutes coming in for the Duran Panthers. We have Auth. And Bredung are in. And I believe Weiss came in also. Inbound pass to, Char to Schleissner. Brings it down across the timeline, stops there, and she's under a lot of pressure and gets fouled. Got fouled by Sabalco. Yep, we're in the foul territory now. We're gonna shoot free throws the rest of the way. And that foul is the third personal on Sabalco. The ninth on Duran, so Schleissner will be at the line for the one and one. Schleissner's first shot is on the way, it's no good. Rebound taken down by the Panthers. Sabalco takes it through the center circle. Moves it over to the left side. Spins, takes it between the circles. Stops at the top of the key. Now they've got it out to Radel at the top of the key. Feeds it down to Kilbotten. Turnaround move, puts it up, and we're going to have a foul against Addie Olson. Addie's first personal, sixth team foul. Kilbotten at the line for two. First shot's on the way, it's good. 52 to 39. Vikings up by 13. Kilbotten second shot. On the way, it's good. 52 to 40. 
Full court pressure being put on by Duran. Long pass to Addy. She stops, puts it up, got fouled as she tried to put it up. And the shot did not go through, but Addy's gonna go to the line. And she's gonna be shooting two. Good job of Cameron Meredith to recognize that Addy was wide open deep. Olivia Breedung on the foul. It's her first personal, 10th team foul, so the Vikings will be in the double bonus from this point on. Addy's first shot is on the way, rattles around and off. A number of substitutes coming in for Duran. Radel, Kilbotten, and Sand all came in. Addy's second shot on the way off the front of the iron, no good. Rebound, saved in bounds by the Duran Panthers, and Sand has it. Gets it over to Sabalco between the circles. Still on the dribble, takes it to the right side, feeds it back out high to Carruthers. To Sand on the right from three, and she hit it. And we have a timeout. Timeout on the floor with 29 and a half seconds to go. Vikings 52, Duran Panthers 43. You're listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Northern Light Webcasting Network is proud to present Colfax Viking Basketball for the 2019-2020 season. And Valentine's Day with the Viking Girls as they take on the Boysville Bulldogs. Viking pregame begins at 7 o'clock and live play-by-play -play begins at 7.10 right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. And we're back here at Colfax High School where I want to remind you that Colfax Viking Basketball is being brought to you by Dairy State Bank where they're banking on relationships. The Colfax Animal Hospital, trust your pets to Dr. Buckley and his staff. Morgan's Auto Body, where after an oh no moment, they can make your car right again. Colfax Messenger for over 120 years, keeping you informed about what's happening in the Colfax area. Colfax Hometown Pharmacy, their family caring for your family and Kyle's Market, where customer service is supersized. Vikings inbound the pass and a little bit too far, but it was tipped by Durand and the Vikings will have, now the officials are gonna discuss it. Nope, they're gonna award it to Durant. But I wanted to remind you before we had all that action that uh, you make sure you thank those sponsors when you stop in there for their help in bringing you Colfax Viking basketball here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. All right, Durant inbound it. Pass comes to Carruthers. She brings it down the floor. 22 seconds remaining. Gets it to Sand on the right side. Sand looking for somewhere to go with it. 15 seconds. Gets it out to Kilbotten. Drives in the lane. Puts a shot up and she got fouled on her way in. Is that a Rachel? Uh, she's acting like it is. It is? It is. I believe that's number five on Rachel. Yes, that's the fifth foul on Rachel. She finishes the game with 12 points. At 11.1 seconds remaining. So Wilson into the lineup for Charlo. Kilbot into the line. She's got eight points on the night so far. First shot's on the way, it's good. And her second shot. On the way, it's also good. Durant has cut it seven with 10 seconds to go. Schleissner has it across the timeline. Feeds it over to Meredith, four seconds. Meredith waits for the clock and there's the buzzer. And you can crown the Colfax Vikings champions for the 2019-2020 Dunn St. Croix conference season as they have knocked off the Duran Panthers by a score of 52 to 45. And we're going to have a conversation with Viking coach, championship coach, Joe Doucette, uh, when we get to Viking post game, which is coming up right after 
this time out. You're listening to Viking Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting a Teenager. Learning the Lingo. Jelly. Jelly adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. You've been listening to Colfax Viking Basketball, live on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. This has been a presentation of the Northern Light Webcasting Network in conjunction with Colfax High School. Stay tuned. Coming up next is Viking Post Game with a look back at today's game. Why was the basketball court all wet? Because the players kept dribbling on it. The dad joke. <laughs> Corny, grown worthy but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh, because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. I can't believe he found them. He seems sorry. We very clearly told him not to look up there. I'm honestly impressed that he was able to do it. Right? What, did he balance on that big chair? Or... Yeah, I mean, I guess he'll just know what his gifts are this year. I really thought we had hidden them well. If they can find their presence, they can find a gun. 911, what is your emergency? Every day, eight kids and teens are unintentionally killed or injured by loaded and unlocked guns. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and N Family Fire. Time now for Viking Post Game, with a wrap up of today's Colfax Viking Girls game. And now, Viking Post Game. And we're back here at Colfax High School where the Vikings have earned their championship by defeating the Duran Panthers. And stepping in to talk with us right now is Coach Doucette. And Coach, first of all, congratulations on another Dun St. Croix Conference yeah. Championship. Yeah, boy, Rick, it feels good. Yeah, great. I'm proud of these kids. Uh, you know, we, we were trying to be super loyal to them, eight good seniors, and it, it's great for them to, you know, win a conference title and, and uh, do it in a, in a, you know, a classy way. And, and so we're super excited. And, and uh, you know, it doesn't come easy. Um, Duran really made us work for everything. And, we had to play right till the final buzzer, but uh, you know I, I thought we played real well tonight. They showed how tough a team they really they really are. I know that uh, McKenna Hurlbert's a little bit hobbled, and yeah, and boy, she played tough though. Yeah, yeah, they, you know they do. I, I give them a lot of credit. Ever since they've been in our conference, they've come in and they never give up. They play hard, and and our hats are off to them. It's going to be a great rivalry in this short time, and and uh, you know we're excited. To, uh, you know that we're in, they're in the conference, and and they're they're raising the bar for everybody. So. So now you've accomplished one of the goals for the season to win that conference championship, and it's time to start polishing things up to get ready for that tournament run. Yeah, I think so. You know, we, we uh, Cal, I think to a person, we, we can get better. I, I really do. You know, I thought Camry Meredith, who never left the floor tonight, was a... Uh, Huge. I mean, she's had a tremendous career, and and uh, but tonight I thought she took it to a you know a, just a super high level. So, but she had a lot of help. So, um, you know, again, Rick, we're we're terribly excited, and you know we think we can get better, and and them good teams keep getting better. They keep working hard in practice and uh, in the weight room and things like that. So I, I hope that's what we're going to do. Well, and and. But your girls are pushing and pushing, and, and, you know, we keep hoping that they're going to reach the peak, but I think the peak keeps growing. As they get better, that peak get, keeps getting a little bit higher as Boy, well. And yeah, I hope so, Rick. I really do. I, I, I don't think we've, we've played well, but I don't think you've seen our, our best basketball. So we're going to roll up the sleeves even tomorrow and try to get a little bit better. So, so we've got uh, Boyceville on Valentine's Day. Yep. And... Uh, <laughs> I never thought that taking someone to a basketball game uh, would be a great Valentine's Day. Yeah. But boy, oh boy, I think maybe that would be a good one. Yeah. And uh, then a week from tonight, you you got a tough road trip down to yeah. Melrose Mindoro. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then you wrap up the season, the regular season yeah. with Spring Valley, and and then it's tournament time. Yeah. So you know, we're excited. I you know we're gonna just you know worry about Boyceville on Friday and and go in there and. Uh, 
you know, and, and act like a champion like we are. And, and uh, you know, it would be a great night. And, and, you know, we're super excited. And, you know, again, to, to represent the community and the school and, and to win a conference title, it, it's really exciting. That's one thing we try to do is impress our fans with our teamwork and, and our hard work and not giving up. And, and I think these kids, they, I think people are excited about them. So we're going we're gonna to keep it going. Very good. Well, thank you. Boy, oh, boy. Dunn St. Croix Conference champions. That sounds really good. Thank you again for stopping up, Coach Doucette, and doing that all season long. We really appreciate that. And uh, you're listening to Viking Post Game on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Open calendar. What's my schedule looking like? Next Thursday, you will be caught in an emergency flash flood between Park and First Street. What? No. No, that, that doesn't work. I'm, I'm busy then. Decline. De decline. Floods don't exactly work around your schedule. Disasters don't plan ahead. But you can. It starts with talking to your loved ones about making an emergency plan. So don't wait. Communicate. Visit readywisconsin.wi.gov. Brought to you by Ready Wisconsin, FEMA, and the Ad Council. And we're back here at Colfax where the Vikings have just been crowned Dunn St. Croix Conference champions for the ninth time in 12 years by defeating wow. the Duran Panthers 52 to 45. Uh, do we call this a dynasty? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe, Joe's got uh, the team working really well together and uh, they got a And, and he thinks they can get better. Yeah. And, they, and, there's, and, and there is, there's plenty of room for improvement, but uh, Boy, oh boy, they're, they are working hard. They work well together as a unit. That's the thing that I like. And uh, Although they, I'll tell you what, they got they got tested a few times tonight. There were some times they were put under some, some pressure, and uh, and you could tell that it rattled them a little bit every now and then. Uh, Durand is, is no slouch, and, and they made the Vikings earn it. So, uh, Dan, what do your numbers say? Yeah, here's the leading scorers for Colfax tonight. Their seniors uh, led it with number 14, Cameron Meredith. She led the team with 23 points. Rachel Charlo had 12. Margaret Slicer had 9. We had Josie Stanky with 3. Uh, Seville Wilson with 2. Taylor Irwin with 2. And Maddie Barstead with 1. For the Duran Panthers, their leading sc scorers, they had... Um, Madison Sand and Madison Kilbotton, they both ended up with 10 points. Uh, we had McKenna Hobart and Jocelyn Carruthers with eight. We had Leah Sabalka with seven, and Addison Weiss with two. So, off we go. That sounds to me like it came out to 52 to 45, or pretty darn close to it anyway. So, Vikings are conference champions, but the season isn't over. We've got a few more games during the regular season, and the next one of those is on Friday when we... Head over to, or check that. That's, uh... Yeah, what was that? <laughs> Thursday or Friday? Yeah, something like that. Uh, let's see, Friday the 14th. Uh, when we're going to go over to Boyceville and see him take on the Boyceville Bulldogs. And that uh, JV starts at 545 and the varsity is at 715. Of course, we're going to have all the action right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Viking pregame starts at 7 o'clock, live play-by-play -play at 7.10. Viking boys basketball team is going to host the Mondovi Buffaloes on Thursday evening. JV begins at 5.45, varsity at 7.15. I knew something was happening Thursday. <laughs> and if you missed part of tonight's game, and this would be a pretty good one to listen to, or you know somebody who would like to hear it, the rebroadcast will be right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network tomorrow, and that will begin at 6 o'clock. Hey, and don't forget, the Northern Light Webcasting Network is excited to announce that for the second year in a row, we're going to be carrying Cowboy Semi-Pro Football from Eau Claire. Games begin on Saturday, April 25th, when the Cowboys host the St. Paul Pioneers. Go to our website, www.northernlightwebcastingnetwork.com, for complete schedule information. Also, and I'm really excited about this one. The Northern Light Webcasting Network is excited to announce that this summer we will be carrying Eau Claire Cavalier Baseball with a Cavalier Game of the Week. Games begin on Wednesday, April 29th when the Cavaliers play the UW Eau Claire Club team. So check out our website. Once again, that's www.northernlightwebcastingnetwork.com for complete schedule information on those Cavalier games. That means that Friday, Dan... 
I guess it's you and me for Valentine's Day. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly yeah. what your wife's going to think about that one. but <laughs> Yeah, we, we might. Uh, I'll see if she'll come along and maybe we'll do a little something before. Or... There you go. There you go. Anyway, we've gotta got to get the... my brownie points. In That's there. right. So we got the Boysville Bulldogs on Friday and... Uh, we're going to be there for that one over in Boyceville, and I guess that's when I'll see you next. Yeah, that sounds good. That final score, once again, the Vikings win the Dunsate Coy Conference Championship by defeating the Durand Panthers 52-45. to You've been listening to Viking Post Game on the Northern Light Webcasting Network. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true, I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow, but shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Visit readywisconsin.wi.gov and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by Ready Wisconsin, FEMA, and the Ad Council. You've been listening to Viking Post Game, a wrap-up of today's Colfax Viking Girls game. You can catch Colfax Vikings games by tuning in to any of the Northern Light Webcasting Network outlets. This has been a production of the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Northern Light Webcasting Network is proud to present Colfax Viking Basketball for the 2019-2020 season. And Valentine's Day with the Viking Girls as they take on the Boysville Bulldogs. Viking pregame begins at 7 o'clock and live play-by-play -play begins at 7.10 right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network.